Mr. Dave here. Welcome to the Arms Public Library here in Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts, where your adventure begins. This is the very first episode of Fun Time with Mr. Dave that we're doing here, and I'm really excited about it because that means we're having two a week now. We've got a lot of fun stuff. We got a story with Arnold, we got some songs, we got some dances, we got some moving. But why don't we start right away with a little bit of music? Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. All right, pretty good. Now let's go a little bit faster. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose, head, shoulders, and toes, knees and toes. Whew. All right, guys, let's have a little bit of fun with our hands. This one I learned a long time ago from a playgroup here in Children Falls, and it's called Tiny Tim. And it's all about a little frog that likes to go swimming and drink up water and all sorts of fun stuff. I'm going to do the hand motions, and you try to copy me. First, we'll go slow. And then we'll go quick. I had a little frog. His name was Tiny Tim. I put him in the bathtub to see if he could swim. He drank up all the water. He ate up all the soap. And then he burped last night from a bubble in his throat. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. All right, now let's go a little bit faster and you try it with me. You ready? Here's your Tiny Tim. I had a little frog. His name was Tiny Tim. I put him in the bathtub to see if he could swim. He drank up all the water. He ate up all the soap. And then he burped last night from a bubble in his throat. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Good job. All right, everybody. Time to stand up. We're going to do the left-right polka. First, let's go over the moves. The first thing you're going to do is take a step to the left. The next thing you're going to do is take a step to the right. Then you're going to spin around in a circle and stop. The next part is you shake your hands up high and then you shake them down low and then you shake them all crazy in the air. Pretty good. I think you got it. I think you do too. You ready? Let's do the left right polka. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. Shake your hands high, shake your hands low, shake your hands crazy in the air. Shake your hands high, shake your hands low, shake your hands crazy in the air. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. Pretty good. Now let's go a little faster. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. Shake your hands high, shake your hands low, shake your hands crazy in the air. Shake your hands high, shake your hands low, shake your hands crazy in the air. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. All right, here we go. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. Shake your hands high, shake your hands low, shake your hands crazy in the air. Shake your hands high, shake your hands low, shake your hands crazy in the air. Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you stop. 
Step to the left, step to the right, spin around in circles, then you drop! Hello everyone, and welcome to the theater. <laughs> Today we are putting on a presentation of Red Riding Hood for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> oh, I do hope you enjoy. Once upon a time there was a girl who always wore a red riding cloak with a hood, earning her the nickname Red Riding Hood. Her grandmother was recovering from a broken leg she received in a skiing accident, and Red decided to bring her a box of pastries from the very popular bakery in town, the Pig Brothers Bake Shop. <laughs> As she left the shop, a nefarious shadow peered at her from the alleyway. Once upon a time, those pigs stopped me from getting what I want. But right now, I see a little girl with a box full of exactly what I want. Yummy pastries. <laughs> Mr. A. Wolf sped ahead of Red and dug a very large hole in the road using a backhoe he still had from his defunct construction business and covered it with straw. He then jumped out and hid behind the backhoe, waiting for Red to fall, quite literally, into his trap. However, Little Red knew the way well, for she was an attentive granddaughter and visited often. And she also knew that the town council had not approved any road work in this vicinity, and approached the backhoe and the large pile of straw cautiously. This is it. Soon that little girl will fall into my trap, and I'll be able to get those yummy pastries! <laughs> Startled by the sudden shout about baked goods, and wary of the suspicious road conditions, Red quickly made her way around the straw area and down the road towards her destination. Perturbed by the inexplicable failure of his trap, Mr. A. Wolf quickly ran down the side of the road, hiding in the brush, and passed little Red to her grandmother's home. There he illegally entered the home and searched for the grandmother, whom he was not able to find. He quickly found a thermometer and poured a glass of water, placed them strategically on the nightstand next to the bed, and buried himself under the comforter. Just then, Little Red entered the domicile and went straight up to the bedroom where Mr. A. Wolf waited. Red looked at the bed, the large lump under the comforter, and the items on the nightstand, and spoke loudly. Why, Grandmama, what a large cup of water you have. Oh, <coughs> oh the better to hydrate myself with, my dear. <laughs> and, Grandmama, what a lovely digital thermometer you have there. Oh, the better to keep track of my favour, my dear. <laughs> Why, Grandmama, didn't you have a broken leg? Exasperated at being discovered, and impatient to obtain his desires, he growled and leapt up from the bed, ready to pounce! Mm -hmm. To be met, face to face, with a police officer, whom immediately placed the wolf under arrest for breaking and entering, and attempted pastry theft. Mm -hmm. You see, Grandmama wasn't in the house. She was in the garden enjoying the sun when she saw Mr. A. Wolf climbing into a back window. She immediately called the police, and Officer Woodsman arrived at the same time as Red. As the officer escorted Mr. A. Wolf off the premises, he looked straight at the repeat pastry offender and told him, Next time, buddy, stay out of trouble and pay for your... Yummy pastries. Come on. The end. <laughs> I really liked that story, didn't you? Arnold does such a great job. Well, thank you so much for singing and playing and dancing with me here at the Arms Public Library, where your journey begins. I've got one more song left for you guys. Mm -hmm. 
My favorite way to say goodbye is not goodbye to you. Not adios, arrivederci, sayonara, or adieu. My favorite way to say goodbye, the best way that I knew. My favorite way to say goodbye is to say that I love you. Thanks so much, guys. See you next time. Bye. Oh,